Hello. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about COVID-19 and headache and uh, if these two are related. Um, so headache is actually a common symptom of COVID-19 infection. Um, headache has been reported as one of the most common neurologic symptoms of uh, COVID infection. And studies show a wide range of percentages of patients who develop headache uh, alongside COVID. Um, but the average is about 12% of patients. Um, headache can be one of the first symptoms of COVID infection, so it could be before you have any other symptoms, um, and it can even start after the patient has recovered from COVID. Um, so you were sick and then, um, you know, got better, but then developed this new headache um, or worsening of your previous, that can happen as well. Um, and this isn't something new that's just uh, related to COVID. Um, headache, um, developing headache with and actually after in, uh, a viral infection is, is pretty common. Um, and we've seen this with um, uh, viral infections like the flu before. Um, and so technically, um, uh, the headache associated with COVID based on um, the international um, uh, headache uh, diagnoses would be a headache attributed to systemic viral infection. And um, you can read here, but basically it's a headache that um, develops alongside a viral infection. Um, so it's pretty self-explanatory, but that's kind of the um, technical term that we would use to dis describe um, headache that is um, associated with COVID. And these headaches based on this um, diagnosis tend to be um, more diffuse. Um, so the pain is everywhere and um, it's usually moderate to severe in intensity. Um, so you might be wondering how, how does this um, infection cause headaches? So specific to COVID, um, there might be some direct invasion of the nervous system. So um, a common symptom of COVID is not being able to taste or smell. And that might be because the virus actually enters the, the nervous system or the brain through the nerves that provide um, smell. So that's the olfactory nerves and that's through your nose. Um, and we do know that the, that the nerves um, have ACE2 receptors on them, uh, the neurons. And these are the receptors that COVID binds to and gains um, entry into the cell to infect it. Um, and we have these receptors all over our lungs as well. And that's why um, COVID directly um, uh, affects the lungs as well. There's other theories as well. Um, you might have heard about um, cytokines in relation to COVID, and these are endogenous um, chemicals in the body that are released when um, there's an inflammatory um, uh, process going on, like infection, and they help fight. Um, they help fight um, infections, but with COVID, we see this upregulation of um, these uh, inflammatory markers and inflammation in general. And sometimes that can cause more symptoms than the infection itself. Um, there's also been some talk about uh, upregulation of CGRP, which um, is uh, known to be involved in migraine. It's a molecule that uh, can trigger pain. And this is because COVID, um, binds to these TRP channels in the brain. And um, that's how that can cause increase of this molecule called CGRP. Um, another hypothesis is that patients, you know, that are sick with COVID, they have low oxygen and um, low oxygen uh, when you don't have enough oxygen in your brain can also cause headache. Um, also fever itself can cause headaches. Um, and uh, we're just, we're gonna talk about some other kind of rare causes of headaches that can be associated with COVID. Um, and these are um, basically complications, neurologic complications that can occur with COVID. Uh, you might have heard that people tend to have more clots with COVID. Um, and because of that, you can get a stroke. So strokes can cause um, a headache, especially if they're in the posterior or the back part of the brain, those, uh, those strokes can cause more headache. Um, than uh, strokes in the other part of the brain. 
Um, and these are strokes, usually with COVID, we have strokes that um, are called ischemic or uh, when you lose blood to the brain, not the ones with bleeding. Um, cerebral venous th sinus thrombosis is when you get a clot in uh, one of the veins in the brain and that can cause um, increased pressure in the brain and that can later cause bleeding and, and, and stroke from the clot uh, in the veins as well. But that's another complication of COVID and can also cause headache. Um, as a result of having that um, clot in the veins. Um, there has been one um, case where um, a patient developed encephalitis, so infection of the brain itself uh, with bleeding and, and things like that uh, with um, COVID infection. Um, and then potentially uh, COVID can also cause meningitis. So this is the covering um, of the brain that can get, um, and you can have an infection there that can cause inflammation um, and also headache from that. Now with usually encephalitis and meningitis, patients will have a stiff neck, they'll be sick, they'll have a fever, um, which you couldn't just have from COVID itself, but um, they might be confused or, or have symptoms other than just headache usually. Um, and the same thing with stroke and, and the um, sinus thrombosis, you will most likely have more symptoms than just headache with these um, because they're likely to cause neurologic deficits. Uh, which means you'll have some problem with your um, uh, nervous system. So difficulty talking, weakness, numbness, um, vision problems, uh, something like that uh, is going to be uh, present probably with stroke and the venous sinus thrombosis. Um, so again, these are very rare, but important causes of headache, which are associated with COVID-19. Um, and so you might be wondering who uh, is more likely to get a headache with COVID-19, am I at risk? Um, and so um, some studies have been done to look at the characteristics of um, headache associated with COVID. And within those studies, they've found that um, patients that have a history of headache, so if you suffer from migraine or if you have tension type headache or any type of primary headache disorder, you're more likely to get headache um, with COVID or after COVID. Um, and if you had COVID and some loss of smell and taste, then you're also more likely to have headache. And we talked about this before um, because there's some thought that COVID has um, invaded uh, probably your nervous system if you have uh, loss of smell and taste. Um, and patients with comorbidities or having, um, so having other disease um, are more likely to get COVID based on uh, some studies. And patients who have GI symptoms, so nausea, vomiting, diarrhea associated with COVID are more likely to have headache um, with COVID. Um, another study showed that if you had um, a fever and if you were dehydrated, you had more, uh, those patients had more severe headaches. And um, if some of you suffer from headaches or, or um, migraine, you probably have already experienced this yourself, that um, fever and, and dehydration can um, trigger or make um, headaches worse. Um, another study showed that 50% uh, of patients who developed headache after COVID never had them before. So um, you can develop, have new onset headache after um, having COVID. So even if you never had headaches before, um, this might be a trigger for you to now start having headaches. And um, they saw that in uh, about half of the patients. Um, also, uh, both patients with um, mild and severe disease um, can develop a headache with COVID. So just because you had a mild case of COVID doesn't mean that um, those patients aren't going to develop a headache. That's, um, it's still possible to develop a headache. Um, and now some of the studies, like I was saying, so they were looking at uh, the headache, um, who gets the headache and um, also what, what are these headaches like? So Usually the headaches associated with COVID were bilateral, so on both sides of the head, uh, generally moderate to severe. Um, they were described as a pulsating or pressing and sometimes stabbing quality. Um, and patients noted that um, they these headaches weren't responding to pain medications like Tylenol or ibuprofen or whatever medication that they 
if they have a history of headache, whatever medication they normally take for a headache. Um, and also studies show that um, this can be a continuous type of headache. So kind of this, uh, uh, this headache that's nonstop won't go away. Um, and the most um, common phenotype or description of the headache um, was mostly closely most closely related to migraine. Um, so sensitivity to lights and noises, nausea associated with this headache. Um, other descriptions of the headache um, uh, fell um, under the category of tension type headache. Um, so not uh, associated with any nausea. And then also some patients um, had a cough induced headache. So every time they would cough, they would get a headache. Otherwise they didn't have a headache. and. Um, this was um, another description of the headaches that uh, they found throughout these studies. Um, so how long do the headaches associated with COVID last? So we don't really have many good studies telling us um, that this is the average amount of time that the headaches last um, or what we can really expect. Uh, and one of the reasons why is because COVID hasn't been um, around you know, it seems like a long time, but it hasn't actually been around that long. So we don't have very clear um, expectations of how long will this headache last. But there's one study that showed that um, about 40% of the patients that had headache um, continued to have it after six weeks, which is a long time. So even after they recovered from the um, acute illness of COVID, they continued to have this headache. Um, and Dr. Chang, uh, a headache specialist at Mayo Clinic, um, in a article mentioned that about 8% of patients with headache um, can continue to have headache even after six months. Um, so that's a pretty long time. Um, and like I said, we don't have very good data telling us exactly what to expect, but um, you can have long lasting headaches from COVID infection. I think that's the take home point um, from this slide. Um, there's something called new daily persistent headache that you could be diagnosed with after having um, headache uh, induced by COVID. Um, and this is basically a daily headache uh, with a clear day of onset. So if you remember that, um, hey, I got COVID and then um, starting on, on the, you know, this date, that's when I felt sick and I've had a headache ever since, you can be diagnosed with a newly da new daily persistent headache. Um, it has to be present for three months uh, in order to make this diagnosis. Um, and this isn't a diagnosis that's um, only related to headache with COVID. Um, it's, it can be due to any reason, but we've found that often this um, daily headache that happens in people can be triggered by a viral infection. Sometimes patients don't know what the virus was. They noticed that they were sick and then um, a week later, or even during that time, they developed a headache and that headache never went away. They've had it every day since. Um, and research uh, about new daily persistent headache um, hasn't shown that there's any particular medicine that works best for these types of headaches. Um, and so the way um, headache specialists and, and neurologists will treat this headache uh, is based on the description of the headache. So if it sounds like migraine, we'll treat it like migraine. If it sounds like tension type headache, we'll treat it like um, tension type headache uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and so how do we treat these headaches um, associated with COVID or even avoid them? Um, and there hasn't been any um, research uh, conducted specifically on uh, which treatments are um, effective in, in these headaches associated with COVID. Um, and headache um, treatment is generally based on the headache um, Phenotype. So similar to NDPH or the um, new daily persistent headache that I was talking about um, just before this slide. Um, so we just treat uh, similar to that. Um, even if you don't have a daily headache that's associated after um, having COVID infection. So your doctor will ask you questions about the, um, the characteristics of the headache and based on um, what those characteristics fit, what kind of headache, that's how they'll treat you. Um, and an important thing, even though, um, you know, you might be getting headaches every day after having COVID, 
um, the way to help not make sure <laughs> So the way to help um, make sure that you're not having headache every day is to avoid using daily pain medications like Tylenol, ibuprofen, um, or any over-the-counter or prescribed pain medication if you have um, triptans or anything like that, um, because this can cause rebound headache and keep the cycle of headaches going. Um, and then another thing you can do um, to avoid getting um, headaches associated with COVID is make sure to get vaccinated because we do know um, that COVID causes headache. Um, and especially if you have a history of headaches, so if you're a patient who suffers from migraine or any other type of headache, um, it's especially important for you to get vaccinated. Um, so hopefully you won't get COVID, or even if you do, you won't have uh, severe illness and um, Hopefully if you do get headaches, they won't be as bad. Um, it is important to mention that um, you can have a headache after getting a vaccine. Generally, they're not long lasting. Um, it's gonna be um, tops a couple days usually um, that you might get a, a headache after getting the vaccine. Um, but in order to protect yourself from COVID, um, maybe not necessarily getting infected, but having severe disease, um, it's important that you get vaccinated. And um, another thing I wanted to mention were um, migraine medications and COVID. Um, a lot of patients um, may have read articles or people might have heard that um, there are specific medications that you shouldn't take if you are, have a, an infection with COVID. Um, and these are ACEs and ARBs or medications like lisinopril or candesartan, losartan, those medications which are used for um, their blood pressure medications, but often used for uh, migraine prevention. And initially it was thought because COVID-19 um, enters the body through the ACE2 receptors that these medications could worsen infection by upregulating the um, receptors, but there's not actually good data to support that. Another, um, in a similar kind of fashion, another medication group that was um, told to be avoided early on during the pandemic were NSAIDs, so medications like um, ibuprofen, naproxen, uh, these type of um, types of medications, some uh, doctors or you might have read somewhere that these should be avoided. Um, but if you use these for migraine, um, you can continue to use so even if you have a COVID-19 uh, infection, they haven't been, uh, there's not enough research to show that um, using these medications can make your infection worse. Um, another um, kind of point of confusion um, associated with COVID and headache uh, was with the vaccine. There were some reports that after the vaccine, if you had had a filler, um, patients developed swelling in the area of a filler. And it's important to mention that Botox, um, although often um, put in kind of the same category as um, fillers, is not a filler and um, it is not, um, you do not have to stop Botox or hold Botox for 24 or 48 hours after getting the vaccine. You can get it right away. Um, it does not have an interaction with the vaccine. Another question that some people were wondering about were, were if they got their vaccine, can they take their CGRP monoclonal antibody shot? So that's Jovi, Amavig, um, or Amgality, or Viafti infusions, um, because these are antibodies just that inf interfere with the uh, production of antibodies associated with the vaccine. And that has not been an issue. And um, you can take your... Um, your migraine medication, migraine preventative or uh, cluster preventative, even if you just got your vaccine. And that's all I have for our uh, talk today. Does anyone have any questions?